Welcome to the Pilates Show, where we explore Pilates tips and techniques to help deepen the skill level of the movement educator while having fun. Hi, today we're going to be talking about um, expanding into our side lateral abdominals and into our back body. So this is, you know, in Pilates, we've, we've kind of talked about this, um, you know, historically for a long time, like breathe into your side back ribs. But I, I want us to get a little bit more detailed and expansive uh, about this cue. So the, the abdominals and the diaphragm are very, very important to each other, right? So if your abdominal wall is not sequencing and connecting optimally, well, that means your diaphragm does not not have any, any support to do its optimal glide and vice versa. So on your inhale, I really want you to think about that kind of 360 um, degree breath and expansion of your diaphragm inside your rib cage. And I want you to, to really emphasize your inhale as you expand in that 360 degree direction as the diaphragm moves down. Now, what's this going to do? It's going to um, eccentrically lengthen your lateral abdominals, your back body. It's going to help the pelvic floor yield, right? And on top of that, you're not uh, pushing or forcing your breath and your contents towards the front, which a lot of people do, right? You'll, you'll see, especially with the term belly breath, which I really don't like, because it it's really shouldn't be just a belly breath, <laughs> right? This pushing out and in, but it should really be this full body, front, back, sides of the body, top, bottom, right? So it's not only front, back, sides, but I'm also sending the breath in the right amount down into my pelvis and, you know, up into my shoulder girdle, neck and head. So it's a, it should be a full body breath. And when we're just thinking belly breath or, you know, that's just the easiest place for the breath to push out and in on, then over time, that's not a great situation for our ab wall and the, and the fascia of our, ab, our, of our ab wall. So in the previous video, we talked about the mama kitty cat, right? Bringing the head back and up, countering here, so we can really get that right placement and that right relationship of our head, ribs, and pelvis. And for our breath, to actually work well, we have to have all these important diaphragms. There's a number of different diaphragms um, in our head and neck, throat, that um, try to, or should, line up with our respiratory diaphragm, our pelvic diaphragm. So that's really nice um, to think about that, you know, any shape that we're in, can we have that, that right relationship between our head ribs and pelvis so that all of these diaphragms inside our bony structure can really communicate. All right, so, so first I'd like you to try to line up those structures and then I'd like you to do nasal breathing on both your inhale and your exhale. So this seems like such a simple concept, but there's so many little details, right? So. You want to try to rest or relax your tongue onto the roof of the mouth. Have your lips softly together, your teeth apart. And then try to take a slow, steady, expansive inhale, really feeling your body open on all sides. And then through the nose, that slow, steady exhale. And try to keep the pace of both your inhale and the exhale at the very last portions, the, the same pace. You can also um, try to place your hands on your waist, maybe your thumbs at your lower back, 
So as you inhale, you can really feel that expansion going on. Because, um, yes, we want, to, we want to feel our front backside ribs open. But another important detail is that you're feeling your waist expand and your lower back expand. And that's where I see that most people miss the boat, right? We get really tight around the tissues of our lower spine. The bones of our lower spine get pretty compressed. So, you know, the body's amazing. We can do all these, these um, compensations and tricks. And if we train ourselves, for example, to breathe into the belly and open on all sides of the rib cage, we may still be able to do that, but the tissue around our lower back and our lower spine still stays stuck. And, and that's something that I see a lot. So you just wanna pay attention to try to really get this lower back and waist tissue moving because, I mean, you can probably just <laughs> figure it out, but people with lower back pain, SI joint pain, pelvic pain, it, if that, tissue starts to become more responsive, then um, dysfunctions or, or pain situations like that are gonna lessen. That's it for today. If you have a different take on today's subject or if there's anything you'd like to see covered in an upcoming episode, we'd love to hear from you. Comment below, on Facebook, Twitter, or in the forum at fusionpilatesedu.com. See you next time and never stop learning.